my mother and I shared a love of hokey things. Happily for us, Alberta, Canada, where she was from, has more large hokey <laughs> tourist attractions per capita than any place on earth. And we visited quite a few of them. We've been to the world's largest stock of corn, the world's largest honeybee, the world's largest oil derrick, the world's largest cowboy boot, the world's largest beer can. We've gone to Vegreville, Alberta, and seen the world's largest decorated Easter egg. It's 75 feet tall, constructed of thousands of aluminum triangles and a few rhombi. It's an engineering marvel. It was dedicated to the centennial of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. I'm not sure I understand the connection. We've been to Glendon, Alberta, where they have the world's largest pierogi. Now, you've got to imagine, there's a fork plunged into the ground, and on its tines, a giant potato dumpling. Now, while you're there, you might want to have a few pierogies and a couple of cabbage rolls. You can do that at the pierogi hotel. Or you could just go to the Chinese restaurant across the street where they sell Canadian pierogies and Chinese pierogies. Now, I recently found out that there is a song created by the people of Glendon. Um, it goes something like this. Pierogi in Glendon, come see. All a dumpling can be. I don't think it's going to make the hit parade, but, <laughs> but I like it. Now, in Mundare, my mother and I had our picture taken beside the world's largest kielbasa sausage. Now, it's right next door to the meat processing plant. Imagine it. 46 feet tall, rises up like a we won't even go there. <laughs> now in Drumheller, east of Calgary, it's right in the middle of the Badlands. And there are dinosaur bones that they've found uh, all over the place. And they built a very prestigious museum, the Royal Tyrrell Museum of Paleontology. But the people of Drumheller are worried that they might not have enough surefire tourist attractions. So they built the world's largest Tyrannosaurus rex, 86 feet tall. I have walked up the stairs in its neck and taken pictures over its giant teeth. I also bought postcards in its butt. <laughs> now, by the time my mother reached 90, it was getting very hard for her to travel, but she still wanted to go places. But her heart was bad and her kidneys were bad and she was legally blind and her memory was shot. But my sister-in-law and I decided that maybe we could take her on one last overnight trip. We take her to Torrington, Alberta, to the world-famous Gopher Hole Museum. My mother was ready to go. She had her bags packed. We put them in the trunk and we hit the road. A couple of miles south of Edmonton, we stopped in Red Deer, Alberta to have lunch. My mother ordered the clam chowder. Now here's a bit of advice. Edmonton is pretty far from the ocean. If you go there, order the beef. <laughs> but my mother ordered the clam chowder. And she's looking at that clam chowder, and, and she's stirring around. And she looks up, and she turns to us, and she said, girls, I can't find the clams. 
the waitress came over to fill our coffee mugs and my mother said, Miss, I can't find any clams in this clam chowder. And the young waitress said, oh, we never put clams in our clam chowder. My mother said, I never heard of such a thing. No clams in the clam chowder. Well, I think that's just ridiculous. She says, down east, you can get a decent uh, c a cup of clam chowder. She was still fussing about it. Several hours later, when we got to Torrington, home of the world famous Gopher Hole Museum. Now, I don't know what I was expecting from a gopher museum. I mean, I knew I was in the right town. We passed the giant 12-foot statue of Clem T. Gopher in the park at the edge of town, and, and I noticed that all the fire hydrants were painted to look like gophers. But the museum, was it, was it going to be a, um, an expose of the life habits of the gopher? Or, or maybe, maybe the farmers' long battles uh, against this, this varmint? Um, maybe the biology of the Richardson ground squirrel, because they're not really gophers at all. Well, I was not prepared for what I got. Now, if ever there was a museum that was politically incorrect, if ever there was a museum in bad taste, this was it. I got to say, I loved it. <laughs> now, imagine, imagine hundreds of gophers stuffed, dressed, and posed, and placed in dozens of dioramas. Now, there was a diorama of a beauty parlor with a gopher beautician and gopher customers. There was a diorama of a church for gophers with a gopher minister and a gopher congregation. There were gopher cowboys and gopher Indians, gopher Royal Canadian Mounted Police, my favorite, though, was the diorama of the mayor fighting with the gopher hippie over a chipmunk. And the gopher hippie was carrying a sign that said, G-A-G-S, gophers against getting stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought it would be nice to have a souvenir I was hoping for a t-shirt, you know, something that said something like, uh, I survived the Gopher Hole Museum in Torrington, Alberta. Uh, but they didn't have too much in the way of souvenirs. But the docent told me that I could read the guest book and maybe sign it. So I read lots of the entries in the guest book to my mother. It was amazing. You know, people from all around the world who had come to this little museum in this small town on the Alberta prairies. I loved their comments. My favorite was the person from Eastern Europe who said, I think it's just terrible what you did to those poor little rats. Rats, my mother said. They're not rats, they're gophers. You'd think a person could tell the difference between a rat and a gopher. You know, I don't even think my mother was sympath sympathetic to the plight of rats or gophers. You know, she really wasn't that kind of woman. Well, the docent told us all about how they make the dioramas every winter the people in town and the farmers from nearby, they decide on what new dioramas they're going to put in the museum. And they decide who's going to sew the costumes and who's going to make the scenery and who's going to make the furniture and props. She said, 
we can't use roadkill. I thought about it a moment, and I thought, yeah, I understand that. Well, you know, I don't think my mother remembered much about that trip at all. But one thing stuck in her mind for the rest of her life. And years later, she would tell the story over and over and over again. She says, we went to this, this restaurant in Red Deer. She said, and I ordered the clam chowder. And you know what? I, I couldn't find any clams in the clam chowder. And the waitress told me, they don't put any clams in the clam chowder. Did you ever hear of such a thing? No clams in the clam chowder. Thank you. <laughs>